Yeah. yeah. So. Like, that was your thing. Yeah. <laughs> that but I'm hoping it's just me. Yeah. You know, I told them like five minutes down. I don't care. I know. So, Lord, let it be so. Yeah. In the yeah. meantime, you know, what yeah. 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 I wanted to mention to you, I mean, Maureen, first of all, your sale went through. It's closest tomorrow. Oh, okay. Because it went from sale pending before sale. That was a lot. Okay. Okay. So I thought, whoa, that's kind of, this was like sale pending this was before sale. Oh, but I know that, that we were just there. We were doing the final walk. Okay, so nothing's falling through. Yeah, no, it's all yeah, yeah, okay. it's Like I said, we've got to take our Yeah. So these things right here, I mean, I, you know, yeah. they need to be replaced. I mean, I can just grab one, two, three, four, four. Uh, you know, two by six is cut them, you know, two two by six, no, four, cut them in half and just pop those off. And, yeah, because those are, you know, yeah, and I know the rail is fine. Then it is, yeah, it needs to be secured at the bottom. Yeah, it is, it is, it is anything to secure that for Yeah, but you know, I think, I think, you know, I think to get that down to the bottom. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's why I like it. And roll, yeah, okay. I think you gotta get rolled. No chance to go looking for that. Yeah. Four bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was yeah. just there. Wendy's. Wendy's. I can hold up, talk a little bit. Sure. <laughs> you know how to do that? I am. I'm sitting over here with you. I'm going to do that. I'm I guess she's there. She's not here, so I'll do that fair. <laughs> uh, so. Well, praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hallelujah. Welcome to Oasis Bible Training Center Fall Quarter. Can you believe that now we're actually starting our second no. quarter? No. It seems like between spring and fall, I don't know if, if it's just me, but it went by like the speed no. of light. No, it took long. And what a nine weeks that we had in that spring quarter. It, yeah. it felt like one week just kind of built into the next one which built into the next one uh, I still remember toward the end when we were all prayed together and I was praying for each person it just there was a special yeah. special presence of the Lord and the papers that people wrote oh. still are warming our hearts yes. each and every one of you those online as well as those here in the classroom you wrote from your hearts the experiences that you had and that's why we're still here we're still growing as a Bible school. We're got our training wheels on still, but we're we're moving. Amen. We're not just talking about doing something one day, but we're moving. And we're so thankful that you decided to be here for the fall quarter. And uh, we're thankful that you online are joining us as well. Some of you may be just kind of checking in. You're peeking in. That's okay. Feel free to peek into the chapels and Speak into the classes. Maybe you're watching live right now on Facebook, or you'll be watching on YouTube later. Um, whatever way that you want to watch, you're welcome. And, and invite people. Feel free to invite people into the group. You'll see right there in the Oasis Bible Training Center group. We're talking about fall quarter group because we have two Facebook groups, one for news, kind of like announcements, and then the other one is where we we're live streaming. So that one just invite people into it and say hey check out this bible school it's a very unique bible school it's not something that um, you see often it's a school of the spirit which there are many schools of the spirit but we're one of the only ones that do not charge any kind of tuition we go totally by faith believing that god will supply all of our needs Amen. and so far he is and we have big dreams. Isn't it wonderful to have big dreams? We have yeah. big yeah. dreams Amen. that the same Father who said, let there be light, that he'll look over at our tiny Bible school right now and say, let there be. Yeah. And there will. One day we will have our own campus. One day we'll have dormitories. One day we'll have a conference center. And we are trusting God. But we're trying to do everything we can with excellence to the best of our ability with what God has given us and then believing God will continue to do more. So continue to speak faith, continue to believe with us and pray for us. We would really covet your prayers 
that God would just move supernaturally for us. And then pray how you could be an encouragement. If something touches you during worship or if something touches you during uh, one of the teachings or messages or chapels, share it with us. We would love to hear from you personally. You can write a comment underneath the video or you can just go to oasisbible.org and you can get our, our contact there and just send it over to us. And if the Lord lays it on your heart to financially uh, sow into the ministry, we'd be very grateful. We're doing this by faith and we're trusting that God will, will supply all of our needs, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. Amen. And uh, I'm so excited. So what we're going to do tonight is we're gonna have chapel. And this is a very unique time in that we're not having class, we're just having a chapel. We'll have worship with uh, Val Boyer. You're gonna hear more about her later. And uh, then you're gonna hear from Dad Porter tonight. You're gonna hear from him, he's gonna greet you. And you're gonna hear from Don Boyer tonight, who's, who will be teaching the Covenants of God class. And then I'm gonna be giving the message tonight, something that God has laid upon my heart. And we're gonna take this two hours, we're gonna fill it as full as we possibly can. And our goal is by eight o'clock that you would be, you'd be out of here and then tomorrow night class starts. So tomorrow night I'm gonna talk about books and I'm gonna give all of the little information and details, answer any questions about what's happening. But right now we're going to go into worship. Would you worship the Lord with me? Amen. Would you worship the Lord? Yes. Amen. Father, Amen. we welcome you into the chapel service tonight, Lord. Yes. Lord, would you come in? Would you rest? More than anything else, Father, we want your manifest presence in this place. Lord, we don't want to just have another meeting, another chapel. We want your presence here. And so, Lord, we're going to stand. We're going to worship you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, all of our guts. We're going to worship you. Yes. We're not going to sing from our intellect, from our head. We're going to sing from our hearts. And we know that our voices are going to be lifted up right before your throne room. You will hear us singing from our hearts in the throne room of God. And Lord, we want you to go, oh, Oasis Bible Training Center has touched my heart tonight. Lord, we want to touch your heart. We welcome you. I push back every distraction, every Amen. Yes. evil, wicked target arrow that is trying to come into the lives of any student, anyone that's watching today with gimmicks and sidetracks and all kinds of distractions, Lord. I, I push that back in Jesus' name, and I thank you that we will focus. Give us the eye of the dove for you. Yes. Amen. You ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. Worship. Amen. Our Father, just allow our hearts to be eyes to be set upon you, but not on what's happening up here. We just give you our undivided attention. Yes. Yes. Hear our cry tonight, Lord, as we lift up this prayer to you in the opening song.
What a powerful name. That name that's above every name. Jesus. Jesus. That name that's exalted. When we say your name, literally your name just is shouted from our rooftop all the way to the throne room of God. Yes. It's like it moves at the speed of light. And every demon spirit and every devil has to get out of the way when we say that name, Jesus. And so, Lord, we glorify your name. You are precious, Jesus. So precious are you, Jesus. We just reach out right now, Lord, and touch your heart. We tell you tonight, Jesus, that we want you. That we're desperate for you. We constrain you, Jesus. That you would come and that you would move. That we would cultivate an open heaven in this place. Yes. Yes. That every student that's here and every student that's watching online, that you would personally come, a personal visit from a personal Christ. That they would receive an impartation of spirit and life. That they would receive not a touch by man, but a touch by the hand of the Lord. Lord, our hearts are burning from within. And even the thoughts of you. Don't pass us by. Come. Move. Yes. Habitate. Yes. We love you, Jesus. There's something so powerful that happens in worship when you stop singing songs about him and you start singing songs to him. Amen. It's lovely to sing songs about the Lord, but oh, when we begin to go deep down inside of our spirits, and we begin to sing directly to the Lord. Amen. Oh, how it moves his heart. Yes. Yes. There's an old song that everybody knows, but every time I hear this song sung, it's something powerful that happens. I exalt thee. Amen. I grew up hearing that song. <laughs> Yet why is it that when we begin to sing, I exalt thee. Mm -hmm. Or sing some of the most beautiful songs that we sang tonight. The Lord's presence begins to move. It's because we're connecting with the heart of God. We're not just singing songs about him in the inner outer court, but we've moved into the inner court and now we're singing and worshiping the Lord. Amen. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. So powerful. Such a connection. That second song that you sang, I can't remember the name of it. You are holy. You are holy. Last quarter, when uh, our beloved Stephen Terry Jones, and Terry's here tonight, hallelujah. Steve is a little under the weather, but he'll be with us soon in the name of Jesus. Amen. But they sang a song, and it ended up being the theme for the entire quarter. And we sang that song every time. And as soon as she began to sing that song, there was a manifestation of the presence of God in this room. Could you feel it? Yes. It was strong. Yes, it was. And the Lord highlighted that song to me and said, that is the song that I've given you for the fall quarter. So we're going to sing that every chapel. Hallelujah. Amen. We're so thankful that you're joining us. Today, online people, hello, 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 hello. We've been waiting for you for a long time. We could not wait to finally get to the fall quarter, and now here we are. We just want to welcome you. We want to say that we love you. We're thankful. We're grateful that you would become a student at Oasis. We pray that God would do something so dramatic in your life this quarter 
that you'll never forget it. I can remember being in classes where my life was changed forever, forever, and we want that to happen to you. Amen. Well, before I give a teaching tonight for chapel, we're going to hear from two very precious people. We're going to hear from Dad Porter tonight, and we're going to hear from Pastor Don Boyer tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with Pastor Don. Now, Pastor Don and Val, they, they're coming from Ohio, so I mean, they are all in. <laughs> They they left the church that they were pastoring. They felt led to retire from pastoral ministry and begin to begin a brand new ministry of teaching in a Bible school. And they come with lots of talents and and gifts that are really you haven't even seen yet what's going to happen, but it's going to be precious. And they've come to join forces with us here. And Steve and Terry Jones have moved in from the Albany area as well. So we have our first two couples that have moved to Wayne County. Both of them are just minutes from the church. Both of them have homes just minutes from the church. They're closer to the church than Diane and I are. <laughs> and we are so grateful. So I asked Pastor Don if he would come and just share for a couple of minutes and share his heart a little bit and greet you so that you know the face of your teacher tomorrow night. Would you like to see his face? Uh, some of you here have seen his face, but you online people have not seen his face. So would you like to see his lovely face? Okay. Pass yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's good to be here, everybody. <laughs> oh, there's a the camera. <laughs> Got a little confused just for a moment there, but uh, it's good to be here. And uh, just to get here has been a, uh, just a blessing to us. We've seen God work in so many ways just to, to get us here. And we're, we're just about here. We're, we're almost here. We, we got, we're going to close in the house tomorrow. And uh, then we get to move all our junk into the house and then rearrange it where it's supposed to go. And uh, in the midst of that, our, our hearts are just totally focused upon God and, and the work that he has for us to do here. And one of the things that I love to talk about is life uh, in Christ. Um, I can talk about it forever and ever and ever because there's so much to talk about. And I believe that that's going to come out in the classes that we have here because I think that's what Oasis is about, the, the life with God, life that, that he gives us and pours into us and all the things. And, and I'm still discovering you know, I've been at this for a couple of decades, and, and it just seems that it keeps pouring more and more into me to know him better and better and better. And as, as a teacher, it's like I just like to pour it back out. Um, I like to give it back out. You know, the more I learn, the more I can share with other people to help them to have a life that Christ desired, matter of fact, died to, to give us. And uh, I'm so excited about uh, this quarter. Um, I know that we watched a lot of last quarter um, via the internet, and uh, it's different uh, watching it there than being here in, in person and everything. Um, but I know many of you can't, just like we couldn't be here. Uh, it was just uh, great to hear the teaching from both Steves. Um, they did a great job, and, and I'm sure that as we continue ahead, uh, they're going to bring us a whole lot more that's just God poured in their heart. Um, and as they read the Word of God, um, they're going to just pour out to you that your life might be more like Christ, that you might walk closer to him, and that, you know, we live in a dark world. And uh, I'm sure you 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 probably pay attention to just a little bit of the news and how dark the world's getting, and we need to be the light. Yeah. Yes. And the only way that we can be the light is to be close to Jesus. That's right. And the closer we are to Jesus, the brighter that we're gonna shine. And when people see that light, they're gonna want to come to it. Because it is a refuge. It is an oasis for the heart. And that's what we're about here, is our hearts being in tune with the Spirit of God. Not just when we come to class, but each and every day, from the moment we wake up until the moment we wake up. <laughs> that even when we're sleeping, I think that God sometimes speaks to us. He ministers, He gives us rest that we need sometimes. And I believe that it's all together, working together in this. You know, we want to help people come to know Jesus more and more and more. That's what my heart is to do. And that's what I want to do with my class. I'm going to be teaching on the covenants of God. 
And I'm going to be kind of brushing it across because it is a very deep subject, but I want to just kind of acquaint you with those things that God has put and told us that he would do for us uh, in the covenants. And that what we said that we would do for him, which is another part of the covenant. So please come be a part of that. Tell your friends that they need to be a part of this school, uh, this quarter, and you'll see God just bless you richly. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited to take that class. Amen. 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 You know, I'm here to teach, but I'm here to listen too. And I, I can tell you about last quarter with the river. I can tell you about going into your holy prayer room and shutting the door. I mean, I can tell you so many things that I learned. From Steve Jones and his class, I look forward to opening my heart to see what Pastor Don has to bring us and the worship that our dear sister has to bring us as well. But without further ado, let's bring up Moses. I mean, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I love my dad. Oh, yes. And I'm so thankful that he's here yes, tonight to support him. us. Because he's my son, he can get away with it, right? <laughs> All you folks out there online, we're, we're so glad that you are online. It's a privilege to be able to do something for Jesus. Amen? Yeah. That's what this is all about. Yes. Yeah. It's to equip us yes. to be ambassadors for Christ wherever we are mm -hmm. in whatever time it is. And I was thinking as we were worshiping, and like Steve says about that second song, whew, I was ready to fly away. <laughs> <laughs> the presence of God just came so, it was wonderful. Yeah. So wonderful. Jesus is so good. Yes, he is. Oh, he's so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 you. Yes. And I was thinking about farmers as they, as they plant, you know, they, they do the ground, get the ground all ready for, for, for seed planting, and then they plant the seed, and then they water it, you know, make sure if it's water or, or they hope it rains, whatever. But the ingredient is that they have faith that they're going to have a harvest. Yeah. And folks, that's what this school is all about. As you said it, as you listen, have faith that God's going to feed you. Yes. The teacher can only give it to you, but you have to digest it. Yes. And God will give you that ability to digest by faith. Hallelujah. Yes. And you won't be the same. Yes. Yes. It will change you. You will grow in God. Yeah, this school is the school of faith. And we make no apologies for that. Hallelujah. It was the mind of God. God told us to do this by faith. And I believe God's got great things in store. Yes. For you folks who are online and for all the folks that, have, that gather here. And uh, more and more people are going to move to Newark. Because they're going to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. They're going to say, I want to be a part of what God's doing in yes. Wayne County. Yes. In Newark, New York. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. God bless you. And we're looking for anticipation of what God's going to do. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just have one announcement. I'm going to make quickly. We want to invite you to our fall conference. And this conference is for Refuge Ministries and Oasis Bible Training Center. Refuge Ministries is kind of like the umbrella. And there's many things underneath Refuge. There's Oasis Bible Training Center. There's Deeper Life Press, our publishing company. There's our local Holy Fire service on Sunday nights. And there's a whole bunch of other things that God has placed there. So we all come together 
a few times a year. Right now it's two times, but it's gonna change here in the near future. And this is a conference you do not want to miss. Mark it on your calendar and say, I'm going to come October 3rd through the 6th. So instead of class and chapel, we're going to have these four days instead in October. And we have some really, really good speakers coming. And some of them you will remember because we have had them before. The first one being J.D. Freer, Pastor J.D., he actually did a chapel service last year. He pastors two churches in the Wolcott area. Love that man and his precious wife and family. And then we have uh, Nancy Taylor Tate. That's Wade Taylor's daughter and Alan. And uh, Alan's going to bring some special songs on the guitar uh, here and there, like a song here and there. And Nancy's going to be sharing with us on Saturday evening. And it's very evident to me that she carries something very special from her father. She has a depth, and I absolutely love Nancy, and I love hearing from her. I get something out of every message. I can't wait for her to be here. And then lastly, we have the bull coming back. Remember the bull? Yeah. Pastor Dan Booyah. And uh, he was with us, and, you know, I had prayed. I had a hard time filling that slot because I kept on feeling like it, it I needed to wait, and then one day I just felt like the Lord said, Pastor Dan needs to come back, and when I asked him, he was more than happy to return to you fine folks, and he's very excited about coming back. So I can't wait to this conference. I think it's gonna be absolutely wonderful and beautiful. It's gonna be life-changing, and I believe that we're gonna have a lot of people that actually that will come from other places besides just the Wayne County area. So come early to get your seat, and we're going to trust God that um, we'll have enough room. Amen. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Oh, Father, it's already been refreshing. I can just, the air in this place tonight, I can sense the movement of your spirit. Your presence is here. Lord, that's what we're after. We want you, desiring your presence above all else. We placed it on our sign, but it's also written on our hearts. We want you. We want you. We want you. And Lord, I don't want to share something from my intellect tonight. I don't want to share something in my own strength. So Lord, I'm dependent upon you. Your son is leaning upon you, and I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, would you touch me tonight, Lord, that I'd be able to have unction? Father, that I'd be able to speak forth a word in season tonight, that I would speak forth your heart, even touching on things I didn't even plan on speaking. Lord, would you hide me behind your cross, that you would receive the glory and the honor? Would you light people's ears on fire that they'd be able to hear the word of the Lord and hearts to receive the message in Jesus precious name amen. Yes. amen for a moment tonight I would like for you to forget every message that I've ever given <laughs> now some of you have heard many messages that I've given and I'm very grateful for that I want you to pretend as if you've never heard a message before because I believe with all of my heart and I felt a quickening in my spirit that I was to teach on a subject that's gonna take me three chapels, so some time mixed in with the nine, I won't be doing all of them. Um, there'll be others that we'll be doing, but I'm going to be speaking on the subject of knowing God. And what I don't want you to do is to make a fatal mistake and say, I already know about that. I want you to sit there and say to yourself, I'm gonna open my heart wide as if this was the first time I've ever heard anyone explain to me about knowing the Lord. I want you to push aside all that other stuff that you have learned in the past and just open your heart wide and say, Jesus, Speak to me fresh and anew yes. this message. I am praying tonight that the Lord would breathe this into your spirit, that it would be spirit, that it would be life, that it would be life-changing, 
that you would receive an impartation into your spirit even as I'm teaching. Some believe that you receive impartation only by laying on of hands. I believe that you can receive an impartation by listening to a message. That there can be an impartation of spirit and life. Spirit and life is more than just an anointing. In fact, Wade Taylor used to say that, that spirit and life is like the, the goods inside of a truck. It's the anointing that carries spirit and life, like a truck carrying spirit and life. So my prayer is that spirit and life would be delivered to your spirit tonight and that something would be quickened, that something would be sparked on the inside of you and that you would say, I can know God. I can know the Lord. The enemy tries to trick people into thinking that this type of relationship that we're going to talk about tonight is impossible. That it's only for those that seem to be way up there. But for me, can I ever really go past the veil and have a relationship with God like Moses had, who knew him face to face and mouth to mouth? They think, well, that's for Abraham, who was the friend of God. Or that's for Enoch, who walked with God. Or that's, that's for John the Beloved, who laid his head upon the, the chest of Jesus. Oh, that's for the three disciples. We, we spoke about that last quarter. About There was the three out of the 12, Peter, James, and John, and then there was John the Beloved. And we sometimes wonder, can I ever be in that group of the three? And, and is it even possible in my lifetime that I can be the one, the John the Beloved? Can I have that type of relationship with God? And can I know him, not just know about him? So let's dig into that. Tonight in John chapter 17, verse 3. And I want to encourage you to take notes, to bring the notebooks with you uh, to class and, as well as chapel starting next week and take notes. Uh, I felt a, a, a small change this quarter that I'm not going to provide notes because I felt like the Lord just nudged me and said, you know, I want to speak to people to write certain things down and not just, just hand it over. So take notes if you can. John chapter 17, verse 3, and it says, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Yes. That they might know thee, O oh, Jesus. Lord God, that I might know you. This is not just words. This is a yearning. Lord, let them know you. Lord, let them truly go deeper and know you. Know what hurts your heart. Know what blesses you. Know what makes you cry. Know what makes you excited. Know the ways of God. Know revelation. Refusing confusion because we don't understand what God's doing and learning to trust God because we know him. Sometimes we don't understand why God does the things that he does, yet we can trust him because he is our father and we can trust our father. There are some things that I'll never get answers to in this lifetime. There are things that have confused me, and but I know this. I will trust my father because I know him and I know that he has the best intentions for me. He is my father and I am his son. He is my Abba. Therefore, I can trust him. I can trust my Abba. I don't understand why that happens. I don't understand why this trial happened in my life or why that sickness happened in my life or why I wasn't healed. I can remember going to, to Benny Hinn services and going to different ones and standing up and crying tears because I wanted God to heal me of a sickness. And I left and I wasn't healed. And the tears would flow down my cheek, but yet I know that I can trust my Father. Yes. Amen. 
That I can continuously declare that I am healed yeah. even if I don't see my healing at that moment. Right. And if perchance I'm not healed on this earth for the hopefully 80 years or so that I'm here. Dan Porter's 84. So if I can make it to 84, even if I'm not healed on this earth, I'll be healed for all of eternity. And some people lose their faith and they can't get intimate with a God that they can't understand. They don't know his ways, his inner workings. And they get confused and the devil comes and lies and says, if you were really loved by God, you wouldn't be suffering with this. Or he's not listening to you or he's mad at you. And it's hard to get intimate. There's a block that happens when you get confused on the ways of God, when really what you need to do is just lay it at his feet and say, Abba, I trust you. Amen. Yes. Mm. There are certain things that I don't understand. Why bad things happen to good people? Why some people struggle? But yet I can say, Lord, I trust you. I, you're working behind the scenes. You're, you see things that I can't see. You're doing things that I don't know about. Oh, Jesus, I trust you. It was in a Job that said, though he slay me, I will trust, trust him. Yes. Though he slay me. That's where we need to be with our relationship with God. Rather than get mad at God. Have you ever been mad at God? I've been mad at God. Because I wasn't getting my way, the way I wanted it to manifest, the timing that I wanted to manifest. And I got mad. It doesn't pay to get mad at your father. He is all-knowing, omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's powerful, and we can trust that all-powerful God with our lives. And I, I would rather go through life and be the Lord's little boy. I'm the Lord's little boy, and my life is in his hands, and I'm just going to trust him. I don't know why things happen the way that they do, but I trust my father. Right. I trust my father. So there's this relationship that the Lord is calling his church into, the church within a church, a people within a people. He's calling us into the remnant of God, but some people cannot become the remnant of God because they get confused at the father. And they don't understand his ways, so they kind of keep him afar off. When We just need to trust the Father, realize that he's had eons, he, that he has no beginning, and we can trust him with our lives, we can trust him, and all things will be answered one day when we reach heaven. I asked the Lord when he took my mom, Lord, why did you take my mom? Well, one day I'll know in heaven. So I just got to have peace in that, that one day I'll have the answer to all my unanswered questions. And while I'm on this earth, I'm not going to allow that to stop me from knowing my father. Even when things that are not good happen, he is still a good God and he's still a good father. And he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And I can trust my Abba Father. And I can enter into that deeper, meaningful relationship with him. Now, some say I already know God or I wouldn't be a Christian. <laughs> I already know him. I've heard people say that. I already know that. I already know him. I'm not talking about meeting him for the first time. I'm talking about knowing him better. Do you want to know him better? Yes. 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 For all of eternity, we are going to know him better. When you arrive in heaven, you're still going to be downloaded with revelation on the Father, on the Trinity. And for all of eternity, we're going to learn more and more and more about the Lord. After 10 million years, we're still going to learn more. And I often use this example. Think of the 24 elders, the 420 elders, and the creatures around the throne. They're crying, holy, 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 holy. 
It's not a tape recorder on repeat. <laughs> holy, 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 holy. They're not up there just with Tourette syndrome. Holy, 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 holy. Every time they say holy, they're downloaded with the revelation on the holiness of God. Can you hear them now? Holy. Like they're overwhelmed. Whoa, holy. And they're being downloaded with the revelation of the holiness of God. For all of eternity, you're going to be downloaded with revelation. And yet there's some people that teach that you can, you already know God. You don't have to seek him. You don't have to search after him. You already know him. You already have all of God that you need. It's already been provided by the cross. You already have everything that you need. You don't need to know anything more. And I'm here to say, yes, everything's been provided, but we can know the Lord better. That's right. We can know the Lord better. I once had a friend, I was on staff with him, a particular church, and at one time he was super anointed. He used to pray and fast, seek after God and yearn and all kinds of things. And then he grabbed a hold of the teaching that he already has everything that he's ever needed and he doesn't have to pray fervently anymore. He just takes it for granted he already has everything and he lost his anointing. When he stood up to speak, it was empty. It was boring. I never want to lose my tenacity. Yes, I've received everything that I could possibly ever want and desire, but you can still know the Lord better. If the 420 elders are being downloaded with revelation on the holiness of God, I have not arrived and I can learn more about God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not just knowing about him, it's knowing him. It's not just knowing facts about him, it's knowing his ways. It's moving beyond just a list of things that you can learn intellectually and you're learning his ways. It's when you wake up in the middle of the night and suddenly he comes in as the lover or the fairest of 10,000, the altogether lovely one, and you get a revelation. You're knowing him. You're learning more and more. And those revelations that he gives you, they're a part of you. They're a part of your spirit and you speak them out and there's life as you speak them out because of the fact that he gave them to you. Amen. It's not just recognizing him, it's, it's knowing him. It's not just saying, well, there's Jesus, but it's having that personal relationship with Jesus and knowing him. The process of knowing God will, will never end. And I want to get a head start on knowing God now on this earth because there's one thing that I'll take with me to heaven. It won't be my books that I've written. It won't be my money or my house or my car. But one thing I will take with me into heaven is this one thing, my relationship with the Lord. What I have cultivated on this earth, I'll take with me. I want to get a head start right now in knowing God as Father. And not get tripped up by the devil's lies that tells me you already know all that you need to know. Or, you know, just calm down, Steve. Be a normal Christian. He hasn't called us to be normal, status quo, lukewarm, apathetic. He's called us to be a passionate, fervent bride that's in love and adoring him, who's crying out to him. When we say his name, Jesus, may the tears fill our eyes. That was what I always noticed about Hattie Hammond that I speak a lot about. The girl evangelist that grew very old, single woman that just loved Jesus. As soon as she would begin to say, Jesus, it's like the whole room filled full of the Holy Ghost power, fire, anointing. She only said, Jesus, because she was speaking to a dear friend. There's something special about someone that has cultivated a personal relationship with the Lord. And Hattie has cultivated that. She was single. And some people say, oh, you poor thing, you're single all your lives. But she had something that would be impossible to get. She spent 24-7 with the Lord her entire life. Wow. And when she became old and she was somewhat feeble, it was said to her before, oh, Hattie, I feel so bad for you that you're traveling all over the world all by yourself. And she goes, oh, honey, <laughs> you're not traveling all alone. I'm not traveling all alone. I'm with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm 
with the angels of the Lord. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me. <laughs> well, it touches my heart. She had something when she was not an average preacher. She had something. And why did she have something? She had something because she had a knowing of the ways of God. She cultivated a personal relationship with Jesus. And because of that knowing, she had his approbation and his favor surrounding her. And goodness and mercy followed that dear saint all around. And she would only have to say, Jesus, and boom, holy of holies. Oh, may that happen with us at Oasis. Hallelujah. We are seeking a very intimate acquaintance with him, not mere information, because we need to be informed. We need to study. But we want an intimate acquaintance with the Lord. There's a difference between being well-informed and well-acquainted. We can be well informed, we can memorize all the facts about Jesus and not be well acquainted with them. And I believe that the Lord is calling us to both. He's calling us to study, to show ourselves approved. We should study the Word of God and I've given several messages at Refuge about how to study the Word of God, how important it is to study the Word of God. That's why we have a Bible school to study the Word of God, but we don't stop at just studying the Word of God. We must be well acquainted with Him, not just be well informed. We have to walk into a personal, intimate relationship with knowing Jesus. So that when we begin to speak and talk about Him, like Hattie Hammond, suddenly it's like a river flows out of our mouths. And it touches everyone that hears us speak. And I'm not just talking about pulpit ministry. I'm talking about you're sitting with your daughter or your son or you're going to Walmart or you're at work and suddenly you begin to speak and open heaven. Open heaven. It's like a river of living water flowing out of you and it comes out of that devotional time. And I spoke about that at length in the last class, the introduction to the deeper life, how ministry must come out of Devotion. Well, that comes by going past being well informed and moving into being well acquainted. Let us not be content with just purely intellectual knowledge of facts concerning God without a personal, intimate experience, relationship, and fellowship with Him. Amen. We do need both. Amen. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the evening. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the evening. Here we see God paying Adam and Eve a personal visit. Yes. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Adam and Eve standing in the garden and there comes the Lord walking. Notice that it speaks about they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. How does a voice walk? <laughs> it's not just speaking of they heard the footsteps of the Lord. They heard the voice of God walking. This speaks about revelation. The revelation that God has given you now is unfolding. You're taking steps. What he spoke to you today will not be what he speaks to you tomorrow. You're going to grow in your revelation and your knowledge of him. You hear the voice of God walking. He's enlarging your capacity to receive more of him. He's giving you more revelation. The revelation is building on the inside of you. You hear the voice of God walking. There's a progression with the voice of God speaking to you. What you learn today you're going to learn more. It's going to keep getting, excuse my English, gooder and gooder as you walk with the Lord. The voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the evening. Isn't the Lord considerate? He didn't come in the heat of the sun. He came in the cool of the evening. Isn't our God considerate? Hallelujah. There's something 
that we see here about his social nature. That the Lord comes to Adam and Eve for fellowship. Yes. Yes. I remember my father giving a message when I was a kid, and you could still hear the message on the refuge website. If you go to the library, click on Wayne Porter, there's a message, God's got a need. People say, What? God has a need? And my dad gave a message about how the Lord desires that intimate fellowship. He has a he doesn't have to have a need, but he wants to have a need for human fellowship. Yes, yes. And here, God comes into the cool of the evening for fellowship because he has a social nature. He's not just a painting on a wall. He's not way up past Pluto somewhere. He wants to walk with you hand in hand in the garden of the Lord. Remember the message about the garden last quarter. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you to forget all the last messages. <laughs> Just remember for a second. <laughs> and, he, and he does that because he wants to keep you company and you want to keep him company. Yes. And if we would entertain that, that we have a father that's, that, that's sitting in the garden of the Lord on a bench waiting for his bride to come into the garden that the Lord is anticipating our entrance into the secret place where we can wait on him and love him and adore him and lay at the feet of Jesus. He is anticipating it. He has a social nature that he wants to fellowship with you. Yes, you. If we really had that revelation, we would shut off the TV more often. We would push aside other things. And sometimes I have to remind myself of that, that I have a father that's waiting on me. He's anticipating. I can't wait till Steve goes back into the garden and sits with me. Where we welcome him into the cathedral of our souls. We welcome him within to come into fellowship within, in the secret place within. We close our eyes and wait on him. Soaking in his presence. Spending time. Oh, how the Lord will give you visions. Revelation. He'll speak to you. And it won't be little speeches. It will be calming words of love. I once told this story, I don't know if I did last quarter or not, but when I was just fresh out of Bible school, I felt led to go and pray, and I went into my dad's mom's church there, and, and it was nighttime, and I had the light on by the stage, just like we have little lights up here, where I could just light up just the stage, keep it dark everywhere else, and I and I went in and I, I sat on one of the pews. I still remember where I sat. It was close to the front um, in the, set, the center section on the right-hand side of the pew. And I sat there and I waited for the Lord. I said, Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to spend time with you. And I, and I just said, I'm just going to sit here until I touch the heart of God. And I sat there for an hour and nothing happened. I wasn't looking for a goosebump, but I was waiting to have some sort of indication that God was there, a stirring in my spirit, a witness in my spirit, and it was deader than a doornail. So I waited for two hours, and I waited for three hours, and I waited for four hours. And about, about that time, the enemy came to me, and he said, God doesn't want to speak to you. God's not listening. And I, and I, I almost believe the lie. He is a liar and a deceiver, you know. And I said, I'm just going to push through. And about, I, I lost track after five hours, but sometime after five hours, I just sat there, my eyes were closed, and I'm like, Lord, I love you. And suddenly, a wind began to blow in the church, and there were no windows open. I felt the wind, and I heard an inner audible voice. It wasn't audible, it was an inner audible voice, but it was so loud that I shook. I began to weep profusely. I was weeping, and the presence of God was so strong, I could barely sit on the pew, and he spoke to me in a thundering voice. He said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I am the God of Steve Porter, too. 
And that was life changing. I wasn't making it up. I wasn't being flaky with it. I, it was a true inner audible voice from the Lord that came as a result of me being desperate to touch his heart and to know him and to know his ways. And he came and he was a rewarder because I diligently sought him. He's a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek me. Hallelujah. He came. He's still coming for sweet fellowship. He's coming in the cool of the day. He's coming to you and me because he's a considerate God, considerate to come and to move if we desire him. But often he stands a few feet back and he wonders, do they really want me or is this just words? And we've all gone through the motions where I want you, God, but we really didn't want him. But when you really want him, man, how God will begin to move in your life. I can remember when I was 18 years old and I, and I was filled full of the Holy Spirit. And I was going into the woods, deep into the woods. And I said, I'm not coming out of this woods until I've touched the heart of God. And I was sitting in that woods for hours, but suddenly the Lord would fill me and refill me and refill me full of the Holy Spirit. It suddenly, it was so powerful. And the Lord was doing that because he was grabbing my attention and calling me into the ministry and calling me to Pinecrest. So he began to do these visitations in the woods, but he didn't do it after five minutes. I had to wait on the Lord. And when he knew that I meant business and I wasn't gonna leave that woods until the Lord came, he began to move on me and it was like a river flowing. And it was so beautiful, it changed my life and it set the course of my future. I wonder if I would be here today if I wouldn't have sought the Lord the way that I sought the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Adam and Eve were Christ's first love. They were created for his satisfaction, for his fellowship, for his sweet communion. But behind this visit, we see a yearning in the heart of God, not only for them, but also for you and me. He's entering right now into our lives and he's saying, where are you? Where are you? Adam and Eve sinned and they hid from God. What they should have done is they should have ran immediately rather than hide. But they hid. And the Lord said, where are you? Now, why would God ask a question if he already knew the answer? You think that God was lost? He asked the question, not for the benefit of himself, but for them. Where are you, Adam and Eve? I believe when he said, where are you? He wasn't speaking of location as much as he was speaking of, where are you spiritually? What's going on? Where are you? You're, 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 you're running away. We had this sweet fellowship, this intimacy, but now you're hiding yourself. I already know that you sinned. I already know that you made a mistake and rather than run to the Father and his feet, they hid and the Lord is, is moving right now throughout the earth and he's saying to so many of his people within the church, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Jeremiah chapter two, verse two. I remember the kindness of thy youth and the love of thy spouses. I remember the kindness of thy youth and the love of thy spouses. This is one of the saddest scripture verses in Jeremiah. We know that Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. It's sad. The Lord was saying, where are you? I remember when you were on fire for me. I remember when you used to pray, when you used to fast. I remember when you used to go into the altar and weep. I remember when you were hungry for me. I remember when you used to fast and speak in tongues until I moved in your life. I remember. But now you've become lukewarm. 
Now you've become apathetic. But I remember when you were red hot for me. I remember. May the Lord never say those words over his bride. I remember. It's kind of like two senior citizens that have been married for 50, 60 years sitting together on a park bench overlooking beautiful Lake Ontario and they're admiring the beauty in front of them and they're remembering all of those times, the wedding 60 years before, when the children came, when they taught their little kids to walk, the little bikes, the little dresses and the little suits, the birthdays when you gave your daughter away, when you saw your son doing things like driving a car for the first time, and they sit there and they remember the love that they had for each other. They remember all of the intimacy that they had in their marriage. They remember how they stuck with it through thick and thin, through good times and bad times. But even when they had reason to split ways, you stayed together no matter what. They remember all of that with an appreciation that fills their spirit. They remember. And there is the Lord. Can you feel him right now? Can you feel the heart of the Father who stands and says, I remember my bride when she used to come to me in the night. I remember when she would fast and pray. I remember when the anointing would flow from her mouth and when she would have fire shut up in her bones. I remember. But now... She sat on her hands and closed her eyes and fell asleep. Where are you? Where are you? He cries. Tonight, I believe, in fact, I believe it was happening on Sunday night, by Sunday night. We've had more feedback on that service than one of, one of the almost any of the services that we've had. We give all glory to God. I believe that God is waking us up. We're not sleeping and slumbering. We're waking up to the seasons and the time that we're living in. It's not time to be apathetic and, and bored with God. It's time to wake up. Yes. Time is short. How do you want to enter eternity? Do you want to enter eternity on autopilot? Or do you want to enter eternity with sweat on your brow because you pursued God with all of your heart and all of your life right up until your very last breath that you would be known as a follower and a lover of God Amen. rather than allow the spirit of apathy to choke you. Oh, how that apathy and that lukewarmness that heart drift that happens so easily if we don't guard against it, the enemy will slowly begin to cause you to go away from the Father, away from the garden, away from the secret place. And then there's the Lord calling out, where are you? I remember when you used to do this and you used to do that. A loving God yearning for his former love. A tragedy of tragedies, all that God has left and Jeremiah 2 of his former intimate relationship with his people Israel is a mere memory of better days. Lord Jesus, I don't want you to be left with a memory of Steve Porter. Lord, I must encourage myself in the Lord as David did. I must stir up the gifts that have been given me by the laying out of hands. And when I start to get lazy, which I do at times because I badly need Jesus, Lord God, let me slap myself till I wake up that I would realize that time is short and I must be pursuing the heart of God. May you never have just a distant memory of the way that I used to be at Pinecrest and the way that I used to be when I first got out of Bible school, the way that I used to be when we first started this work. But Lord, I pray that you would light the fire on the inside of me, that I would run after you with all of my heart and all of my mind and all of my being, that I would run after you, that your train would fill the temple. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 
and change me and rearrange me and move me and, and impart to me and deliver me of those things that easily beset. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see in the book of Hosea that the Lord is the deserted lover. We see the broken heart of God all through Hosea. And the Lord right now is a deserted lover with many people inside of the church. I'm not talking about the world. I'm just talking about the church right now. There are many people in the church that are content. They're doing church as usual. They're being just like they've always been. They haven't grown spiritually in years. They don't pray. They don't fast. They just, oh, Jesus, help me. And that's their whole prayer life. They're not running after God. And the Lord is saying, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, Jesus. Does God say over me, I remember? And does God say over this city of Newark, I remember when you diligently ran after me? Uh, I, there's something on the inside of you that says we cannot allow our city to become lukewarm. Not just us, but every church and every pastor, we all together need to wake up Amen. and realize the shortness of the time. Be like the sons of Iskar that knew the times and the seasons. Becoming the watchman on the wall like I talked about on Sunday night. Hallelujah. And Hosea, God is making his heart bare where he exposes his wounded heart. Lord, I don't want you to expose your wounded heart. I want to bring joy to your heart. I want to bring refreshment to your heart. Lord, I don't want you to be the deserted lover. There he bears his heart to let us know of the wound, the sorrow, the tragedy of the heart of God when he realizes that his own beloved has not only abandoned him, but has traded him for other lovers. Oh, Jesus, I can weep just thinking about it. Have you ever traded him for other lovers? Lord God, please, may we not trade you for other lovers. Lord, may we not trade you for other lovers. Choosing other things above you. Entertainment and sports and this and that. And being lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. May we not trade you. Lord Jesus, you will have no gods before you. Lord, we willingly crack and break and demolish the idols that try to stand up in our lives, Lord. And we give you a fresh commitment in Jesus' name. So God calls us out. Even now, he's saying, where are thou? Where are thou? The real objective of this message is not to inform you, but by the Holy Spirit to plant in your heart a renewed desire for God. Oh, I want that. I want that with all my heart. Yes. That you would receive an impartation, not from my intellect tonight, but I am pulling deep down inside of my spirit tonight that you may receive an impartation, a fresh desire for God. Amen. That you would shake with a desire for God. Yes. Yes. That you would quake with a desire for God. That you would wake up in the middle of the night with a desire for God once again. In the name of Jesus. Yes. That you would satisfy the very heart of God because of your dedication. And you would satisfy his, his longing heart because you're a bride that adores him and loves him. You've chosen not just to do good things for him, but to also love him. Not just to be a Martha doing lots of good things, but also being a Mary. Mary has chosen the greatest. Devotion must be first and ministry must flow out of devotion. If there's a ministry, 
that puts ministry ahead of devotion. You will have a ministry full of activities, ministry full of stuff, but you won't have the manifest presence of the Lord. And I don't want refuge ministries or Oasis Bible Training Center to just entertain people. I want there to be a deposit. Let them be drawn here, not because of a man's gifting, are drawn here because we do all of these activities to try to grab people's attention and bribe them to come to church. But may we say, God, we want you to come and sit on that chair and rest in this place that they would be drawn unto the Lord himself. Because if you create a circus to get people to come to church, then you have to come up with a bigger and better circus in order to come. A bigger and better this and that. Whatever it is, you got to keep doing bigger and better events in order to get people to come. Trick them into coming. And then you wear people out and they're all tired and there's no fruit. But when you center your heart and your ministry in your church, wherever that you're watching, if you'll center your ministry, your church, around the heart of God, I can promise you they'll come from the north and the south and the east and the west because they'll know that they're encountering not a man or a personality or a special event, but they're encountering the Lord himself. You cannot duplicate, you cannot counterfeit it, but when the Spirit of God begins to move like a river, people want to be in the river of God and they'll say, I want to drink and I want to drink deeply of the Lord. I want more of him. Oh, I want more, more of him. Lord, you're not going to say over my life tonight, where are you? Because I've already made my way into the secret place, into the garden of the Lord. I'm already laying at your feet, Lord Jesus, and I'm doing first things first. I'm loving you, and then I'm receiving my marching orders. Amen. Amen. There's a difference, and I said this last quarter, between good ideas and God ideas. You can do good ideas all you want, but you know, when you do enough good ideas, you'll burn yourself out. But if you do a God idea, he'll equip you, he'll supply for you, you'll have the energy, the strength, and it will be successful. So we don't try to do too many things because we, what we do do, we want to do it well, and we want the backing of the Holy Spirit to come and to change people's lives. If I have to just entertain people to get them to come, then that is a very hard and tough responsibility. But man, if the Holy Spirit themselves will draw. We had a, an email that came a couple weeks ago, and they said, every time we pass the church, we feel compelled to visit there. And when I saw Oasis Bible Training Center sign on the church, I felt I just needed to take classes. They enrolled as a student and they'll be here tomorrow night. Yeah. Who drew them? Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I prayed in the beginning that I would get off topic and say the things that he wants me to say. And I definitely have done that tonight, but I do pray that the Lord has lit something on the inside of you tonight. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to lay hands quickly on every person and just pray that God would ignite in the name of Jesus, ignite that, that fresh passion for God in the name of Jesus, that fresh passion in the name of Jesus, spirit and life in the name of Jesus. Quicken, quicken in the name of Jesus, quicken in the name of Jesus. Stir in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, quicken, yes. stir, afresh. I know that every person I'm laying hands on already has a desire for you, but give them more. Let them let them know you more. Yes. More in Jesus' name. I'm praying for the more in the name of Jesus. The more in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. The more in the name of Jesus. The more. In the name of Jesus. The more in the name of Jesus. The more in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The more in the name of Jesus. The more in the name of Jesus. The more 
in the name of Jesus. A fresh desire being lit like a fire in the name of Jesus. You see flickers right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the summer, but now is a fresh season. For dear sister, God has brought you through some tough times this summer, but God is doing something very special inside of your heart and in your life. Even now, he's giving you an enlargement of himself, a, a deeper revelation. You're going to feel waves of the Holy Spirit even as you go home. And the Lord says, I'm going to bring visitation to your house. Yes. 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 Thank you. Visitation. I'm there when you cry tears. I'm there when you ask questions. I'm there. I'm standing right there. I hear every cry. I dry every tear. But you're going to become more aware, the Lord says, of the presence of God, the manifest presence of God in your home. I see you just sitting on a chair in your living room. Or somewhere, somewhere, a chair somewhere in your home, and suddenly there's God. Oh. For you've said, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you. And the Lord says, you will know me. This message is not for somebody else. It's for you. He's calling you to the more. And he's giving it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. More in the name of Jesus. More in the name of Jesus. Yes. Wicked. Stir. I thank you for spiritual substance, Lord. No. That you're giving to my dear, precious sister, no. Kingdom Moore. Give her good dreams at night, I pray. Peace. Peace. In the name of Jesus. Prince of Peace, would you embrace my dear sister? In the name of Jesus. Touch. In the name of Jesus. Touch. More. More. More, Jesus. More. Oh, Lord. More. With the fire right now. In the name of Jesus. That same fire that yes. was on the heads of Pentecost. Yes. Bring that fire in Jesus' name. More. Yes. I thank you for the revelation. The sacrifice and prayer. Oh Lord, he's trembled and he's fasted and he's prayed and he's sought and he's begged and pleaded. Lord, let him see the answers yes. to his declarations and proclamations. For he has been misunderstood and time has gone by, but you placed him to be a watchman on the wall to protect and to declare and to create. Brother Don takes to heart all of the things that you tell him. It's serious to him. It's life and death to him. He doesn't just have an apathetic spirit toward the things of God and the things that you share. And I thank you for that appreciation. And because of the faithfulness, you'll give him more. You'll call him deeper. You'll refine him even more. I thank you for the growth, the spiritual growth. I've seen him grow so much. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to see the growth from the day I first met him until now. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And he who began a good work will be faithful to complete it. He's giving you grace to fight what you need to fight. He's giving you grace to cut what you need to cut. He's giving you grace, pouring it out over you right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless you. In the name of Jesus. Bless you. In the name that's above every name. Bless you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for a fresh fire. I thank you for that Holy Ghost word that you gave Bless my dear sister. And she even shared it again tonight. And every time she shares it, there's a 
a beauty that comes forth. Yes, thank you. We have an appreciation that she's found her family. That she's loved and she has a lot of love inside of her to give. Thank you, Lord. Now enlarge her capacity to receive more of you. Give her more that deeper desire of knowing you. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would ignite that within my dear sister. In Jesus' name, yes, thank, you. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, that name that's above every name, I pray for my dear, precious friends that are watching online. Lord, move. Yes. Yes. For you are not confined to space or time. That one that's watching locally, that one that's watching on the other side of the world, those that are watching in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Australia, those that are watching in Alaska, in Florida, in Washington, those that are watching in California, in Kansas, those that are watching in Pennsylvania, those that are watching in Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Mississippi, all through the South, Arizona, in the desert regions, New Mexico, Father, I pray that you would come walking in the room right now. In the name of Jesus, and touch their heart. Let there be fire right now. Yes, thank you, Lord. An impartation of spirit and life for the enemies tried to put out fire, but Lord, tonight the fire has been lit on the very first service of the very first day of the fall quarter because now, Father, we are running. We have no baggage that's holding us back from this quarter. We're not going to allow the enemy to stop us or distract us from attending, Lord. We are going to receive all that you have for us in this quarter, and we're going to grow in you. So, Lord, right now, consume my brothers and sisters in the Lord that are watching online, some that wish desperately that they could be here. Lord, we can't lay hands on them physically, but in the spirit, right now, we're laying hands on each and every one, believing God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You'll be faithful to do it in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, after all that has taken place tonight, we're still five minutes early. We had time for beautiful worship. We had time to hear from Pastor Don and my dad time to deliver the word, time to even have a little moment of prayer. And now we're going to dismiss with expectation for tomorrow night. Amen. 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 That's right. yes. It's important, if you can, to be here in person. Yeah. You'll receive something in person that's harder for you to receive online, although I believe that God can move beyond space or time. and He can, mm -hmm. he can use what he has to work with. If you're far away, of course you can't come. But if you can make it, please try to come. If I was to say that there is a check for $10 million for you if you'll come tomorrow night, would you be here? If I said you have another check for another million or two next Wednesday to chapel, would you come? Well, how much worth do you place on the inner wealth of God that he's depositing inside of you? Don't become distracted. Come and receive. You're investing not just in your life now, but in your eternity. Right. Remember what you, you, you get now, you're bringing with you into glory. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I know you, and you know me. The Lord jumping off the throne and running to meet you because you're dear friends. <laughs> Amen. Lord bless you. Three minutes early. <laughs> See you tomorrow night. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video if you can. We're inviting everyone that's uh, even not a part of Oasis. If you think that somebody would benefit from this service tonight, then share it. Write a personal recommendation on your social media or send it just the URL. Um, we, this will be a YouTube video tonight. So when I get home, which won't be, within a couple hours, this will be live on our YouTube channel. You'll, you'll see our YouTube channel on the website. And uh, if you can't find it, just write in YouTube, write Refuge Ministries or Oasis Bible Training Center, and it will come up. Invite someone, because perhaps somebody's life could be changed too. Thank you, Lord bless you.